Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle Book Hall of 29th of May 2021. And I've just come back from town, market, etc. And I bought a number of books. I did intend when I went down not to buy any books. Quite often I just think I'm not going to buy any more books. You can see, obviously, behind me, I've bought a few too many books sometimes. And I then have a tendency to go and buy some more. So, really shouldn't do. Ho oh, ho. I will trim them down. I always get rid of books, give them back to the thrift shops sell them on, whatever, give them to friends. And, well, let's just go through the ones that I got today. And I, I say, I didn't intend to buy any, and I bought a load. So here's, they are, Marigold Garden. Now this is by Kate Greenaway. Lovely illustrations all the way through. So you've got some absolutely beautiful artwork. Now this is, I don't know the date. Now there's at the front, there's a, a lovely uh, 1973. Someone's just put there. So uh, Samantha Jane, with lots of love, Andrew. No, it was not me. Howard, 25th, 12th, 1973. So, Marigold Garden by Kate Greenaway. Now, I must admit, was familiar with her name, not any of her art. So, I've also got another one here, and I'm just going to quickly now because I've moved them out of order. Here's the other one The Pied Piper of Hamlin. So, you got there, Kate Green. Now, I got these for literally nothing on the table, they were a pound in total. So, uh, lovely book. I mean, just look at that inside. That is just so glorious, isn't it? That beautiful, look at the tree, absolutely beautifully drawn. And again, this one's 1975. Now, this is a different person. Oh, no. Some, Sammy Jane now. Obviously, Samantha. She's now become Sammy Jane. So, obviously, same person, which I suppose I should have guessed it would be very unusual. That, but that's 1975. Now, I'm not certain of the date. Absolutely no idea of the date. Because, um, of course... Someone putting something in there might have been 10 years before that, 20 years, who knows? Without a bit of research to find out. But absolutely glorious pictures, illustrations all the way through that. Just look at that, beautiful. Just love those sort of illustration books. When you can pick them up for, well, why not? This one, not a mega fan of Tiger. I, I probably bought a few comics of Tiger. I've got a few comics still of Tiger. Uh, this one's 1960, great year, 1960. And it's, um, it's in reasonable condition. I mean, it's, I love the way they always did. They didn't, trouble is, of course, if you've got them all along a line now. And they didn't do, I don't know what happened. Maybe they did have Tiger 1960. No idea. But quite often you find these old annuals with this sort of thing. Most of maybe they were just displayed particularly differently. So, however, I suppose they weren't worried about people putting them on the bookshelf with all along. Because people would just get rid of them. I know I got rid of all my annuals back in the 60s. But this one here, the fact it's got Spike and Dusty. Now, I don't know if these stories are British stories, American stories, who did the, the artwork. There's no information. Amalgamated Press Limited, 1959. So you've got Phantom Giant of the Deep, Spike and Dusty. Now, unfortunately, because I got so many, picked up so many books, there were loads more I could have picked up. But the trouble is, there's only so many you can lift. So if I had a car, which I haven't, so I have to lug them back from town, Ways a ton. By the time I've gone up the hill, I'm sort of thinking this is really quite painful. So uh, that's a limitation on buying too many books. It's just the sheer weight of books. And likewise, just the house collapses. That's the next thing as well. Suddenly you suddenly think, well, hang on. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have put four million books in. <laughs> yeah, that's not so good either. Rock Fist Rogan. And also just the amount of time you've got to read these things. I mean, I can read fairly quickly, but I mean, there's just a, a limit to how many you can get through, even if it takes 15 minutes to get through. And of course, there's a lot of, I'm not going to read all these stories. I have to say, most of these I am never, I'm never going to read Butternut Turns Hunter. Whoever Butternut is, uh, what decision would you give? I mean, that's the thing. There's a lot of these Royal Rovers. Now, I will read these stories. Royal Rovers. Just great, looks like, I mean, beautiful red as well. Look at that glorious red. Reason I bought it was this Olak the Gladiator. Love Roman stories, any Roman stories. I know this is nothing like Roman times, no relation. It's just, but I love stories set in ancient Rome. I've got lots and lots of books just purely for the one or two pages that are set in Rome. <laughs> Crazy way of buying books, but that's well done. And you've also got lots of other sporty things here. Good show, jumping cracker. Just glorious. Yeah. Also, they've all got 
slight strong whiff as well. Of course, they've just piled up all over the place. You go into a market or whatever, and, or a shop, there's just literally, they get all kinds of smells. So there's always definitely a, a waft, especially from an annual from 1960. Probably gone through quite a few markets over the years. I guess, a few more hands than mine. Now, the worlds of John Ruskin. I went to an exhibition fairly recently. I don't know, I haven't just looked to see if this is the similar book. Uh, maybe it was his book of the exhibition, I don't know. But it's, I love Victorian books. Well, obviously it's not Victorian, but with all the artwork from the Victorian period. So you've got just glorious artwork there. And bloody crab there. And many more. So great little book there, John Ruskin. Look forward to read that. With John Milius and all that stuff. I love the, there was the Effie Gray, the DVD. Got that. I love that film. And also books about pre raphaelites and that sort of stuff. There were a couple of other books, pre raphaelites but I thought, no, I'm not going to buy every pre I mean, because quite often when you look for books like pre raphaelites I've seen all the paintings, all the drawings before, or I've got maybe another copy somewhere else. And you think, mm, can't get everything. Now, this one had a few more slightly obscure stuff that I haven't seen before, his notebooks and things. And I thought, well, that's worth getting for that, if nothing. 1950s. I love the 1950s, and I especially love the fashions in the 1950s and 60s and 70s, of course. And it's got lots and lots of beautiful examples. Now, I've got a few fashion books like this, where you've got all the, uh, the various drawings and things. But this is quite nice because it actually breaks it down by year. So you've got 1955, evening wear, sports and leisure wear, 1955. I just think they're just glorious. I love films in the 1950s as well. Talking Pictures. Love watching Talking Pictures channel on the uh, uh, TV. And it's just brilliant. You watch all the 1950s films. I love just that period. I don't know. The films are absolutely rubbish, I think. <laughs> but I just love the fact. Actually, quite often I just watch it just for the fashion, the shops and all the various things. Some of the stories are completely used to sing. Not all. Some of the film noirs, some of the British film noirs are amazing. Really, really good. Really, you can watch it and you just think, what a great story. And it's such a pity that they've been tucked away and lost for so, not lost, but sort of ignored for so long. And it's great that Talking Pictures are putting all these sort of things on. And I love that channel. It's probably, whenever anyone says about a TV license, the only reason I keep TV license, not for the BBC, Sky Arts and Talking Pictures. BBC, I like the BBC. But very few brands. Pursuit of Love. I enjoyed that last week. However, on to, on to books. Instead of TV series that are brilliant. I'm not going to do TV series that I like. Now, artistes are not pompiers. Not certain about particularly about the thing. Obviously, that's a, an overall thing. And they've just got the Olympians. And you've got loads of other things. All Obviously... Alma Tadema and all those sort of people. So just go through there. You can see various paintings there. And I love all these sort of books. These books are just great. And okay, again, I've said, sort of completely contradicting myself by saying that I get a book that hasn't, because I've got quite a lot of these pictures already, but it's still nice to have it in a sort of book on this subject in one place. So, and also it's a nice size book as well, which is something that's uh, is quite, and I must admit, I haven't got this one. I've never seen this, but I don't even know it's by. No idea, it probably says in the front. Maybe, uh, oh my, I'm not gonna say it. JJ A. Le Comité. I would never make an art historian. I love paintings, I love, I can, millions I can real, but I would not be very good at actually saying the names. I'd always get the names wrong. I'd be on TV. And then if people, if I did it with an artist on TV, people would phone up later and say, why is that guy saying the name completely wrong? Who knows how he said. Anyway, another book, sort of similar, Illustrating Shakespeare. Love this one. Love this one. Peter Whitfield. Got a few books by Peter Whitfield. That name is familiar. However, this one, just love Shakespeare. Love Shakespeare. All, I've seen all the Shakespeare's plays at the Globe. Kind of all, all at the Globe, but I've seen quite a lot of the Globe, and also on TV. Winter's Tale was on recently. I love that was on the on the BBC, BBC Two, I think. Could have been BBC Four, one of the two. That was brilliant, absolutely glorious. And this uh, this has got lots and lots of great. Not some of them I've seen before. Some I haven't. This one, uh, you know, Measure for Measure, just great examples. I mean, what a beautiful book. I mean, I'm just. I mean, these sort of books are just brilliant for this. 
Shakespeare's plays Hamlet. You've got obviously examples there. And there are Shakespearean heroines, Cleopatra, and many, many more examples all the way through. So this is just a glorious book. Really glad I got that. This one. I was a football man. A mega football fan back in the 60s. I loved football to the point of obsession. Everything, everything was in football, football, football. And this one, I did have this book. I remember having this book. I got rid of all my football programmes all over the years. Sad, because I wish I'd kept some of them, but what can you do? You can't give it. And this one I always call Tropical Times. Don't know why, but it's Topical Times. Which is one of those things just pointed out. Football book. And this book, I must have, I did definitely had. Because I remember just going, when I flicked through it earlier, I just thought, wow, I remember all these. Of course, all the names familiar. Alan Clark. You got uh, obviously Bobby Moore, you got Alan Evans, you got uh, I just oh, look at that, those weights, the good old weights there, and uh, Ernie Hunt, Alec Elder, Peter Bonetti. I love Chelsea, I was a mega Chelsea fan. I love Chelsea. You got Dave McKay, you got uh, Colin Stein, football dads, 10,000 jackpot. Every game I played in was worth 500 pounds of my old club in Portfield. And you've got souvenirs, Jimmy Greaves. Just great example. I mean, it's sort of book, I'm not going to keep this book. But it's one of those books, that when you flick through, it's a bit of nostalgia. Pure nostalgia, just going through. John Gilchrist. Oh, I must admit, John Gilchrist. Millwall. Wasn't a Millwall fan. So I must admit, I think they were probably second division at the time. So I can't remember. Bobby Murdoch. I must admit, Scottish football. Completely ignorant of Scottish football. Sorry. You've got picture gallery here and you've got various Brian Lewis. Again, I spoke when I turned around and said, I remember all these pictures. I don't remember them all because Grimsby Town, Tony Curry, I remember him, Sheffield United, he was really good. Eamon Rogers, I was going to say Eamon Holmes, but nope. Uh, George McVitie and so on and so on. Just great. Oh, there's some more pictures there on the next page. Oh, yeah, there's some more. Bobby, Bob Curtis, John Toshak, Toshak John Collins, Reading. Some of these, of course, I don't remember. I mean, they were literally, I would. I must admit, it would have been really nice if they brought out a book, and maybe there was, I can't remember now, a book of photos of all of the various footballers of every club, all the first division, second division, third division, and fourth division. Because back in the 60s, of course, that was the, uh, the might have even been a north and a south at some point as well. There, of course, the divisions have always been changing. So, uh, great little book. Very enjoyable. And also this one, I love London books. One of my friends is a mega, mega, super knowledgeable about London. And I must admit, every time I find a book, and I, I, I love London as well. I've lived in London most of my life, on and off. And I just love the place. And I go up to London quite a lot. And of course, books about London, I just love it. And I just pick this one up. And this one's got just lots of great pictures. All about my favourite period, 1960s, early 60s. 1961, 62, 63, all with lots of pictures of all the buildings, the cars, the rest thing. Now, I'm not into cars or anything, but I love, I just, I must admit, pictures of old cars from 1960s, I'm perfectly happy to look at. The mouse trap, never been to that. Cat, 1975, lovely little cat there. And you've got so many other examples, and they're just great, these books. Man exhausted. After obviously going to an exhibition, oh, Daily Mail Ideal Home Exhibition. An absolutely excellent, I love the Ideal Home Exhibition. Definitely worth going to. Now you've got here, I'm Forever Blowing Bubbles. I have no idea what that's about. The Light of the Modern World. Oh, this one, Shocking Business in Regent Street. The Nell Gwynn Tavern. Is that still there, I wonder? No idea. Absolutely, probably must be, I assume so. Portman Square. And so many other examples of various, Shuffling on the Heath in Hampstead Heath. This one, or oh, St Paul's. Now, a lot of these, must, that street must be, that is still there. I've walked up that street. And of course, this is showing London that doesn't exist. All this London, all these pictures of London, completely, utterly gone now. You would not see this, this world. You've got all these sort of things. Look at that, beautiful. Look at that shop there. Just glorious. Now, I don't smoke. I never liked cigarettes. I mean, I got cigarettes from my mum and dad, but that was about it. But when it comes to cigarettes, but I still love pictures of, like this of 
shops with all the various signs in there, lions and all those sort of things. You've got lion, individual fruit, something, I can't remember, fruit pies, Old Holborn, I remember that, Wall's ice cream. So you've got all those sort of St. Julian, Nut Brown. I remember getting all those ones. You pick, you get these packets and they were sort of stuffing, very odd stuff. However, it wasn't something for me. However, I also picked up loads of comics. So I've been general books and there were actually quite a few other ones and I, occasionally I pick up comics and I put them back down again and I think afterwards I think, why didn't I just hold on to those? However, one of the good old, this one's an L. Miller. Now, but Alan Class, Alan Class had loads of these, but L. Miller was before that sort of earlier period. And I love these ones. They're just great, they're black and white. So we've got there, black and white. Now often they never ever put any real detail particularly, so you wouldn't know. Um, Marines in action, wow, it actually says, it's a little bit down the side there, Marines in action, just about 13, can't, remember, can't make that out. Now this one doesn't, so this one's Death's Round Trip. Now some people are very good at actually identifying the various names, the artists, and all those sort of things. I have to say, I have no idea. All you ever have is these sort of things, the, the job code. And there's 867. So you can always look it up and find it. Of course, you can always go on the GCD and quickly look up. Find. Now, I've had this one before. I remember this is very familiar, this story. The man who outdistanced death. Just glorious. To me, that looks like Al Williamson. I might be completely wrong. I'm hopeless when it comes to identifying artists. But he looks very... And this one here, Mystic. Big value, one shilling. But they had quite a few of these sort of Alan Class ones. This one I got because it was an L Miller, but uh, 68 pages as well. Just swung it, 68 pages. They had 69, don't want it. 68 pages, yeah, have that one. Now I'll pick this one up as well. 52 pages, again, I love these 52 page ones. This was Jimmy Olsen one, Superman's Pal. And this was a, a very unusual period. I didn't actually buy it from Jimmy Olsen. I mean, Jimmy Olsen's fine, I mean, but it's actually uh, one of these sort of Period, obviously, Jack Kirby. Just brilliant Jack Kirby art. Can't beat a bit of Jack Kirby. Again, for next to nothing, relatively. Compared to certainly getting it at a comic convention, anyway. But I love these ones. I, these are always my favourites. These are all these albums. Actually, that's what, the only reason I bought it was because of this advert. Because Donny Osman, Barbara Joan Streisand. You know what? I, never, I wouldn't have known that she was Joan Streisand. Ignorance on that one. Birds. Gary Puckett, Rod Stewart, every picture. So you can see the period, obviously, 1971, 72, that sort of period. But the reason I also bought it was, purposely, was for this, at the back. The Newsboy Legion. And I think they brought this out recently, I'm not certain. They brought out a few of the, but I was thinking about getting that. But um, I love those ones. I love, whenever I, I remember in the 70s when I would pick these comics up, I would always, I wouldn't, I actually wouldn't, wasn't interested in the, the front story. Jimmy Olsen just did not appeal. So, Newsboy Legion. Always would turn to that. And I love these stories. Then there was something about them, the old uh, 1940s. I didn't even know, particularly, that they were 1940s. I mean, obviously it says 1942. This is from Star Spangled Comics, 1942. But I just, it wouldn't, it probably just went over me. When I was that young, I would just, you know, didn't mean anything. But I just love the story of sort of uh, the New York, the roughness of the streets, that sort of period. Just Jack Kirby really captured that sort of street, the, the kids selling the magazines and the, you know, the papers on the corner, that sort of stuff. There was something wonderful about that. So that one I got for that. And I got another one. Well, actually, I wonder if it's in order. I didn't even look. 147, 142. No, obviously a bit of a gap. This one's the, uh, there, the vampire. It's the vampire. So you've got uh, a bit obviously uh, Jimmy Olsen again. It's a great little story there. I have no idea about this story. I have no idea at all. Obviously Superman's in it. And you've got here, welcome to Small Planet, welcome to Transylvane. No idea. And another reason why I got it was this. Star Spangled Comics and back, Newsboy, um, Legion and The Guardian again. I don't know what the story is. I mean, the stories often are pretty rubbishy. I mean, now when I look at them, I think, mm. but they're still, I just love the artwork, the power in the artwork, Jack Kirby's artwork, just the passion. Look at the way he just, there he bop. There's no sort of like messing around with, with Kirby's one. Bang, and the character's flipped over. I mean, would that really happen? But it didn't matter. 
doesn't matter at all, does it? The way the, the way he sort of hits people and sort of what every the action is just flows from page to page, just absolutely. And sometimes when you look at these pictures, look at the kids there, just the one. Very unusual, but I love those ones. However, I'm just going to finish off with the ones that were to me were quite a surprise. Now, it was an amazing fantasy 15. Now, that would have been a surprise. I wouldn't have been able to resist that one. However, this one, Lion and Thunder Holiday Special. You know, they just don't turn up. I, I've not seen in, well, for, since forever, a, ho a holiday special. So not at comic conventions. Just all those sort of things. I've just uh, would never find these sort of things. So this one is just absolute pleasure. Now, I was not a mega but I must be Black Max. I've recently, uh, the uh, Rebellion, been bringing out all the Black Max. So it's lovely to see a Black Max in here. The Roman Legion. Oh, didn't even know that was in there. Roman Legion. Wow. Yet another Roman story. Even better. Even better. But that's just great. Just a holiday special. However, so I was even, not one, but another one. This one, three shillings as well. A Valiant Summer Special. I just love Summer Specials. There's something magical about a Summer Special. I don't know why I didn't keep them because they were so magical, but I bought loads of summer specials when they were obviously when they came out. But I, Valiant and Lion, I wasn't particularly a fan of those comics. A bit, but but I did buy them. I remember getting them. So you got Valiant one there, and now this one's a bit faded on there, and that's just great. Kelly's Eye, brilliant stories, and this Raven on the Wing. So that one, the nuts, uh, Battle of Britain. Obviously, some more sports one related. I don't know what year this was. Absolutely no idea. This is sometimes they never put the date. Wouldn't it be lovely if they'd actually put the date? Maybe they put the date on the back or something. But so how do you know? You, the only way you can do it is go and look online and find out a picture, find a picture, and say, oh, that's 1969, or because it must be 1971, 69, that sort of period. 1970. Actually, it's just down the bottom there in the copyright. However, to finish off, another one. A Valiant Summer Special again. I mean, you never find... I've never, I've never found any Summer Specials. Ever. Ever. And then to find three on one pile of comics. So, of course, I bought all three. Yeah. Just brilliant. I love summer specials. So uh, I, haven't got, I haven't got many, but there's just something magical about summer specials. Because you go to the beach, you take them to the beach and you've got often, like literally, you would leave them on the beach. Well, not probably put them in the bin. I was never leaving things around, but there was a sort of thing that, you know what? I can't remember where they all vanished to. I suppose I probably didn't leave them on the beach. I probably gave them to friends. You'd have them in the car when you're coming back from the beach, like Dim Church or some sort of deal or something. You'd be coming on the back and you'd be sitting there reading the uh, thing. So. However, let's just go through the Wild Wonders. Is it true? No idea. And you've got some more here, another one. And you've got Raven of the Wing game. And Kelly's Eye game. So obviously he was, a, maybe probably was near enough for the next year. Let's have a look. Two and six. Oh, clearly that must be the year before. 1968. 1968, this one. So that was it. That's the haul for the... However, I did... Not a haul from today, but just one another one that I did get. Tintin. I'm just going to point this one out. I'm going to do a review of this one. I might do some reviews of these ones as well, once I've actually read them. This one, Tintin. And I love Abrams comic arts. They bring out so many brilliant books. And this is a superb... Tintin book, just excellent, full of, worth checking out. If you're a Tintin fan, or actually European comic book art, definitely worth checking that out. Also, I picked this up, I love these books, Penguin Classics, 50p, one in my local charity shop. Anytime I see a 50p Penguin Classics, always worth getting, because I just love the various introductions, as well as all the various notes. Obviously the stories as well, but it's also a good, Two thirds of it, near enough, sort of background information. Always fascinating stuff to read. And also, I've got this one as well. 
who I must admit, not familiar, whoops, not familiar with, but an artist that I'm definitely uh, very impressed by. And uh, so I will uh, enjoy reading that. And I will be doing a review of this one. This is another one book from Conman. Conman bring out these lovely books. This is fairly small. You can see it's very tiny, but still at the same time, very nice with lots and lots of impressive pictures, very nice quality. And they've got lots of others as well. So there's a selection of their other books. I don't know if it's, let's just quickly flip. No, hasn't got any more in the front, but this is another one. So that's it. That's the haul for today. I must admit it wasn't, let's say, I wasn't intended to buy any books at all. And I just ended up buying too many. And I could have bought a lot more as well. So uh, it's one of those things that I shouldn't have. Uh, well, I hope you found this of interest. Bye.